We were told that Whole Cake Island would be the Year of Sanji, and it turned out to be a little different from what readers expected of a Sanji-centric arc. A typical character arc can be thought of as a journey, where the character goes through experiences that change them from start to finish and resolve some sort of internal conflict. But Sanji at the end of Whole Cake Island is still basically the same person he was before Whole Cake Island. So rather than a journey, think of Whole Cake Island as a trial for Sanji's character. Rather than change him or develop him into a new person, Whole Cake Island simply served to challenge Sanji in ways that allowed us to explore who he is, what he brings to the table, and the value of his character. Before we get into the trial, let's talk about how Whole Cake Island fleshed out Sanji's past and gave us a new perspective on why he is who he is. If you read Sanji's Whole Cake Island backstory back to back with Sanji's original Bharati backstory, together they make for a much more powerful, more complete story of a boy who was scorned by his biological family, who only found solace in cooking, who was disowned by his father and left to travel the sea alone, until he was ultimately taken in by the most selfless father figure possible, a man who not only sacrificed his leg for him, but shared in his dream and fostered his cooking talent. We now have a greater understanding of Sanji's sense of debt to Zef that kept him tied to Bharati. We now see why cooking meant so much to Sanji in the first place, and how his dream of all blue developed. Beyond that, the past with the Vinsmokes gives new meaning to how important the Straw Hat crew itself is to Sanji. Throughout Sanji's childhood, his only source of love was from his mother. His father viewed him as trash and treated him as such. His brothers mercilessly beat him, and his sister wouldn't step in to protect him. But in his mother, he found the one person who would give him unconditional acceptance, who wouldn't shame him for who he was. Now we see that in the Straw Hat crew, he has found this same kind of acceptance. When Luffy refuses to eat anything unless it's made by Sanji, he's not saying that only Sanji's food is good enough for him to eat. The dish Sanji ultimately gives Luffy has been completely ruined, but that doesn't matter. All Luffy cares about is the fact that it's his friend who made it for him. Just as we saw with Sanji's mother, she didn't care that his food was terrible, she was happy with the food because Sanji made it for her. In the same vein, Luffy is delighted to eat anything Sanji makes because Luffy cares about Sanji. The quality of his cooking is secondary. Of course, normally Luffy loves Sanji's cooking because it is very high quality, but at least at this moment, all he cares about is the fact that Sanji made it for him. We are also given some insight into Sanji's emotional side. We know Sanji as an extremely passionate character, an extremely fiery character, a romantic character. But we learn that Sanji's father didn't value emotions, and that Sanji's brothers actually had their emotions removed to make them stronger in his eyes. In contrast, Sanji's mother gave her life for the sake of his emotions, and we see that this is what Sanji represents today. We are reminded that Sanji is all about emotion, and what some may view as weakness is what he has made his strength. He is actually fueled by his emotions, the heat of his emotions literally manifesting in his fighting style. But now beyond broadening our overall perspective on Sanji's character, Whole Cake Island was a general showcase of everything that makes Sanji's character special. And as I mentioned before, to highlight his best qualities, he was essentially put on trial. To begin with, we see that Sanji's kind-hearted nature becomes a burden this arc. It's easy to forget, but our first real introduction to Sanji's character was him performing a major act of kindness, when he chose to feed a starving man despite the fact that he was a violent criminal. This was the kindest thing anyone had ever done for Jin in his entire life. And what's interesting is that Sanji being recruited to the Straw Hats was actually entirely based on this act of kindness. That was the moment Luffy decided Sanji would be the perfect cook for the crew, and he hadn't even tried Sanji's cooking yet. We see this kind-hearted portrayal consistently throughout the series. Sanji is a guy who would never refuse a lady in need, who feels obligated to help a father searching for his son, who repeatedly steps in to take what his weaker companions can't handle. As such, it's fitting that Whole Cake Island puts his kindness to the test. Most of his problems this arc stem from the fact that he is choosing to take the burden of this entire situation upon himself rather than allow his crewmates to step in and help him. His fight with Luffy was the result of his desire to protect Zeph as well as his crew. Even after Sanji and the crew have reconciled, they're presented with a new problem because despite everything Sanji's family has done to him, he is too kind to simply abandon them and leave them to their fate. Yet by sticking to his kind-hearted nature and saving his despicable family, ultimately even they cannot ignore what Sanji has done for them and their relationship changes forever. They still view him as a failure, but by the end of the arc they're willing to put their lives on the line to defend their failure. Along those lines, Whole Cake Island tests Sanji, the chivalrous romantic. 
In Sanji's mind, women are perfect beings who can do no wrong. He lives to serve them, and he can't help but fall in love with each and every one of them. So how about an arc where for the first time, a woman breaks his heart? Sanji falls head over heels for Pudding and is completely taken in by her act because Sanji sincerely would never doubt a woman's tears. So for him to then have this image of Pudding as the perfect woman shattered so brutally when he was already at his lowest point is essentially the ultimate test of his romantic, chivalrous nature. For a while, the reader is made to absolutely despise Pudding. It seems as though she is one of the cruelest characters in the entire series. We want to see some serious comeuppance for this character. But what happens instead is a far greater testament to the strength of Sanjay's character and his values. Despite the fact that this woman deceived him, mocked him, intended to kill him, Sanjay still would never raise a leg against her. He still cannot help but be kind to her, to defend her, to see the beauty in her. Sanjay really can't bring himself to hate her because that's just not who he is. He stays true to his ideals because at the end of the day, a man forgives a woman's lies. What's amazing is that we get to see that this borderline stupid, unreasonably extreme sense of chivalry ultimately does make Pudding actually fall for Sanji. From the moment that he genuinely praises the beauty of her third eye onwards, her attraction to him only grows as she is blown away by his kindness, his cooking skills, his fighting skills, his code of honor, and she comes to truly love him for who he is. Finally, we get the ultimate challenge for Sanjay the cook. Every member of the Straw Hat crew is extraordinary in their profession, and in this arc we're reminded of everything that makes Sanjay an extraordinary chef. Because it's not just the fact that he makes great food, it's that he understands the significance of cooking, the value of food, that he empathizes with those in need of a meal. And so this arc really brought the story of Sanjay the chef full circle. We were first introduced to him as a man who would feed even the worst pirate, because a true chef will feed anyone who is starving, no matter the circumstance. In Whole Cake Island, Sanjay's code is put to the test on a far greater scale when a rampaging emperor of the sea is starving to death and can only be satiated by one dish that is supposedly impossible to make. Readers complain about how feeding Big Mom actually made matters worse for the Straw Hats as she was free to pursue them afterwards. Whether someone is worth saving or not, the consequences of feeding a starving person None of that matters. A cook's duty is to feed anyone who is hungry. What comes after is a separate issue entirely. And so the real test of Sanjay the chef was whether he would be able to fulfill this duty, even with a case as difficult as Big Mom. And of course he passed with flying colors. So essentially Whole Cake Island fleshed out Sanjay's origins and explained why he is the man he is today and also served to highlight the best aspects of Sanji's character by putting him on trial in various ways. His kindness was put to the test by his deplorable family, who he ultimately chose to save despite their cruelty. His romantic, chivalrous nature was put to the test as he had his heart broken by pudding. His code as a chef was put to the test as he resolved to feed even a starving emperor of the sea. Overall, I think Oda had a very clear vision of what he wanted to do with Sanji in Whole Cake Island, and he executed it very well. If you wanted to see Sanji getting in a fight, as I also did, there are plenty of other arcs to choose from. But Whole Cake Island was about focusing on who he is as a person. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, and subscribe.